Okay, hello and welcome to Porting and Polishing Tips. You're here with TJ. You can find any of the tools you see me use online at ccspecialtytools.com or reach us at 1-800-762-6995. Um, now, in this section, I'm going over the ports of a two-stroke. Um, something, like I said, I've been meaning to do for a while. I've already did one on Intex. This is going to be about the transfer port. Ooh, these lovely little things. A key and critical port in the function of a two-stroke. Actually, all the ports in the, in the two-stroke are critical because... It's just such a simplistic, beautiful engine. It it works is so efficient and it works so well as far as the power delivery to weight ratio. It's just they're they're awesome. So anyway, enough about my love obsess love obsession with uh, two strokes. So let's let's move on to talk about the transfers. These right here are the transfers. Now they are the let's call them the second stage in the two stroke process. Uh, they are what let air in in from the uh, crankcase they let be transferred thus the name transfer ports into back here into the combustion chamber so this little tunnel goes in and comes out right back here so and dumps above the ascending and descending piston so you have the piston going up and down don't make any dirty jokes up and down through here and so when it comes through the intake, you remember if you watched the last part of my series of the intake, it's below the piston. It's below the piston. It's transferred into here, into here, into the crankcase. And the air fuel mixture is down here in the crankcase. Then as it, the piston descends down here, this descends and rotates down. I right, pushed out of here into up these two little ramps. Remember, this is going to fit on right like cha. So these inlets to the transfers correspond with these ramps from the crankcase. That air fuel mixture is pushed up into these transfers and transferred above the piston into where the action happens, the combustion chamber. So just a quick reiteration. At configuration right here this is basically all you need to deliver enough power to haul your butt down the road that's what's beautiful about two strokes so these little transfers now there's a couple different configurations for transfers you can have ones like these little simple ones here where it's basically just a cut out here and a cut out here and then a slope a little opening here and here into the uh, combustion chamber so the side of the piston will actually function as the inner edge of this transfer and the inner edge of this transfer, uh, which is pretty neat. Or like this, where you have a full wall and tunnel or path port going all the way back over until it opens in here into the combustion chamber. Now let's talk about a couple of the considerations about the transfers. There are a lot. One is the inlet to the transfers. Now, the first thing I'm going to point out is the inlet to the transfers are where a lot of casting mismatches occur. Not always, but I, I find them here a lot. The second thing is, is the uh, transfers are where people tend to get overzealous when porting and just bore these things way the heck out. Don't do that. Don't do that. As you, and you heard me mention this in the last one, as you increase cross-sectional area, you decrease velocity because you have the same displace, the same amount of displaced volume displaced by the piston moving up and down. Not trying to be technical, but that's just how the system works. So piston moving up and down here is what forces that moves down the descent. It's what forces this air fuel mixture that's in in this crankcase and down in here in this crankcase. It forces it across these ramps and up into the transfers. So that being said, that volume is fairly constant if you have an increased bore or stroke. So just increasing the cross-sectional area. Yes, you can make the air flow more efficiently by increasing this to a certain degree. But no, you can, you can also decrease volume and lose trajectory into the transfer. So the less, the less um, force, I guess is a good way, it's not an accurate way, but the less force that this air is experiencing as it goes up in here and out into these, the less trajectory and velocity it will have as it's pushed into the 
into the combustion chamber above the piston. So, uh, like I said, I'm not trying to get too technical, but that's something you need to know. You just don't want to just start boring these out completely. Um, these inlets. Now, the next thing that I want to talk to you about the uh, transfer ports is trajectory, which is uh, fairly important. Now, a lot of people have these smaller two-stroke pistons and say there's not much you can do with it, uh, with these transfers, but actually that's not true. Um, you can increase or change this angle here more up into and back in to the uh, combustion chamber, which typically is going to result in greater torque, uh, particularly in the mid-range, or you can angle it more straight across the, uh, the, pit, the surface of the piston, which will typically create higher RPM uh, horsepower. Uh, you know, yeah, I realize there's going to be trolls that come in here and say, blah, 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 this is this and that, I, I don't care. Uh, I'm just telling you, as a general rule of thumb, that's how that works. Now, the other thing that's uh, critical when you're working on the inlet to transfers is gasket matching. There is going to be a gasket that fits a very important gasket, so don't leave it out, but a gasket that fits between this piston, this cylinder, and this crankcase right here. If you modify the inlets to these transfers, but you don't modify this gasket, you haven't really helped yourself much. You have to gasket match, okay? The gasket that sits on here needs to be matched not only to these ramps, which need to be matched to these transfers, which need to be mapped to that gasket. So a lot of match, it's kind of a match game. Um, but that's important. So this gasket that will fit around here needs to be matched to these transfers, needs to be matched to these ramps. Now I'll tell you another thing. I like to do some modifications on the crank side to these ramps. I like to get those looking a little bit more efficient. This one has not been ported at all because I just picked it up to show you. But anyway, I like to tune these up. You can see right there, the crappy casting mark, uh, that interferes. This angle right here is way too abrupt. I don't like that. I like it. Uh, I'm like, well, actually, this side's good this side's crap. So anyway, it doesn't matter. You get the idea. Uh, and that's actually really bad. It's kind of irritating me right now. But anyway, yeah, moving on. These ramps, well, that's what correspond to this correspond to the inlets on these transfers and they all need to match. They all need to be contiguous, which is the word you just learned today, which means they need to match each other and flow nicely. Now when working on these inlets, like I said, there's you want to clean up casting flaws and things like that. Uh, mismatches, particularly if you have a cast iron cylinder liner, uh, like uh, old blue here, he's got the crud beat out of it on testings anyway. If you have a cast iron cylinder liner like that, a lot of times it will not match the aluminum uh, that you have there. Now this is a Nikasil coated one, so it's a little bit better, but anyway. You get mismatches there. You want to clean those up. You want to get these nice and smooth, looking for tr air transition. The other thing, I don't like going straight back in here. Like I said, I didn't port this particular cylinder. It's one I had lying around. I just picked up to show you because I wanted to do these video series. But I like how they do it. They do a slight gradual curve that extends back into here. And then on this side, it comes out nice and smooth too. That way you get great trajectory in around this uh, slight gradual curve into the combustion chamber. I like that. I like that. Uh, the intakes like this, and that's thing I will mention, the inlets for the, um, the, inlets for the uh, transfers. Very easy to work on with a straight handpiece. You can get, if, if you're doing just like a stage one level of porting, you can get to those pretty easy with these little straight hand pieces. Uh, even with longer carbide burrs, larger ones, you can get on back in there pretty good. But when you get beyond that, when you're getting up ba beyond basic cleaning up of the intake, basic uh, cleaning up of the transfers and a little bit of work on the crank, you start getting to a level where you're messing with the windows of the transfers, which are yeah, here, and here. So these two windows here and here correspond to the tunnels that go around to the side and here. Uh, another thing I want to tell you 
from my own personal experience, uh, what I've seen customers mess up on. These walls and these transfers actually act as structural integrity as well. They help support. Remember, you have a freaking explosion going on back in here, right? You have combustion. So don't thin out these walls too much uh, because that can allow this metal to distort. Uh, so, you know, don't forget structural integrity also plays a role in, uh, in what you have to take into consideration. So don't just go hogging these out right to... Uh, you don't want this about the thick. If you get this to the thickness of an aluminum can, you're pretty much screwed up, Bubba. And then here's the other thing you need to watch for. A lot of these, these are water jackets that you see here. That lets water, now, you know, with air fooler's not that big of a consideration. All you have to do is make sure you don't get through the, uh, see this transfer here. But you don't get go out the edge here. Um, plus, this is a smaller piston, so you don't have as much of an explosion. But anyway, I digress. Um, you have to make sure you don't get into these water jackets, okay? Don't cut into them. See, when this is going up in here, you have this water jacket, jacket cooled cylinder, so try not to cut into them. Um, anyway, uh, where were we? Oh, yeah. We, we were talking about the inlets of transfers. Now let's show the critical part, and that's where they open up into the combustion chamber. That's ya and ya. So, you have, so this is where they open up. Now this is, uh, well, there's a lot to discuss here. Uh, first thing, port timing. The top edge, or roof sometimes called, but can be called other things. The top roof of this uh, transfer determines your time, a lot of your timing, and the bottom floor and our bottom determines your timing. So moving these two changes your timing. Uh, just as a recommendation, if, if you're new to porting, don't start messing with those yet until you know what you're doing, okay? Now, front to back side, uh, this, in this, uh, the X or Y axis, whatever you want to consider. Anyway, in this axis, you are increasing volume. So you're increasing the, as you widen or increase this size, you incre you're increasing the potential volume of air that can be moved through this opening window. Uh, this and as you can see, they've pretty much taken it to as, about as far as you can with that and still maintaining structural integrity. And that's fine. You can see this one's done quite as well. The other thing is how these windows are shaped can determine a lot of your power production characteristics. Which, uh, because it, well, how these windows are shaped to determine trajectory. I like mine aimed kind of like this and it's more towards this, the intake side away from this, the exhaust side. So I like my trajectory to be away from the exhaust side into the combustion chamber, preferably back up in, up in this direction, up into the combustion chamber, because it's gonna give you better mid-range from my experience, and uh, towards the intake side. Because remember, you don't have to worry about escaping out this side as much, other than this little ramp thing right here, which doesn't, doesn't really serve much as far as letting it go back that way. The trajectory tends to be up into here as well. Um, so anyway, towards the intake side and uh, away from the exhaust side, because you don't want this uh, charge, this fuel charge to be slipping out the exhaust port here. You want it directed back up this way. Uh, you're probably wondering what these two little holes on the side, those are auxiliary exhaust ports uh, or boost exhaust ports, whatever. The, I don't care what you call them anyway, that's what they are. I uh, just don't want you to get confused with these. These serve a completely different function than these. These are your inlet transfers. And once you start messing with top and or bottom of these, uh, you've started changing your timing. And you better know what you're freaking doing. Yes, you can do it. I do it all the time. But you better know what you're doing. And uh, you'll also notice the top of this boost port on this intake is right in line with those transfers because they serve the same function. This part of the intake actually transfers above the piston, the uh, top of the piston, along with these transfers. So these are how that air-fuel mixture from down here in the crank finds its way above into the combustion chamber. And these are critical. If you're going to start messing with these, you need a right-angle porting tool. You may have your friends say, oh, you can get away with uh, this, that, and that. No, you really can't. If, if you're doing this, uh, charging people any kind of money, or even, or even if you want to 
create a, a, a real ray cylinder, you need a right angle to get back in here. You just do. Uh, don't try to uh, skimp on that. Get, get something that's going to work. Because you can angle these. You can uh, increase the trajectory or control the trajectory into the combustion chamber. You can do so much with that. I, I promise you it's critical. Even when you get down to these little ones, um, you can get to them easier. Uh, they're... You can probably get to this with a straight, but you can't get that angle the way you want it to. We have guys that um, do RC boats and planes like that, and they buy the smaller right angle hand pieces to do this transfers because that this transfer, its full, its trajectory into the combustion chamber plays a critical role into your power production. That's just something I can't stress enough. Uh, <clears throat> like I said, cross-sectional volume and transition from uh, one place to the, the other uh, plays a role, but this trajectory at the actual opening plays a huge role as well. Uh, as I've said in the others, I'll probably think about 10 other things that I could have told you that would have helped, but uh, I hope that covers the basics, and uh, hopefully it'll help you out. Again, you can find me uh, online at ccspeciallytool.com, or you can uh, chat with me at twostrokecentral.com.